do fee only financial planning. I, I have nothing to sell, no commissions. I'm not tied to any company or any product. So I'm free just to give you advice and share hopefully wisdom and strength and uh, help you out in an in independent way. And you just pay me for my time. So wow, glad to be here. That's nice it. Joe, I know you've been here. Joe Rojas, Quality Title Group. I do real estate closings. We have lots of experience, great service, and a uh, ton of flexibility. So if you, we can help you with your uh, residential and commercial loans, give me a call. Mm -hmm. Joe Rojas, yes. Quality Title. Thank you, Joe. Well, Doc, stand up here and tell us how that trip to India. She was there for over two months, wasn't she? Oh, yeah, that's right. So. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Rachna Jain and I am the founder of Who Made It Your Complete Wellbeing. I offer a program that guarantees to transform your health to a new level irrespective of where you stand in your fitness spectrum. And this month I'm excited <coughs> about a cleanse that I'm offering at the end of the month to help you get rid of your daily tox toxin exposure. So if you're interested, you can talk to me later. Well, welcome back. Let's give her a warm welcome. What is it? How can you get rid of toxins? Toxins, toxins, toxins in your body. In your body. <coughs> yeah, she said when she was uh, visiting family friends, I said, "Well, did you kind of stay on your diet, on her, you know, watching all the healthy foods?" She said, "Well, yes <laughs> and no." Everybody. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, then, then you've got to introduce our guest yeah, speaker. Okay. I think, Trevor, you sure you don't want to come on up? No, I'm fine. Okay. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce our good friend, uh, Mark McLaren. And um, he, I don't have a formal bio, but I will tell you this. At our house and among our friends, he is known as the Energizer Bunny Rabbit. We do not know what he runs on because Mark has taken care of customers. He's taken calls from me at 9 o'clock at night saying, I've got a tenant that has no air. And he is to my tenant as quickly as he can get there. Just a remarkable man. My husband knew Mark many years before I did because Mark was part of a family business for 30 years and um, calling on hair salons, etc. And he had an epiphany. He had a midlife crisis and decided to go into refrigeration. I'm going to let Mark tell the rest of the story because it's really cool. Let's give it up for Mark McLaren, Refrigeration. <laughs> Thank you, Wynn. Thank you, Joe. And thank you, Mr. Carter, for giving us this fabulous opportunity to have our meeting here. And I don't want to steal your thunder because I'm going to talk to them today about some things that can be avoided, can be done in the home to avoid disasters. The worst service call that I ever get is when someone calls me and there's water coming through the ceiling or through the ceiling tiles or whatever because Number one, there's no money in it for me. Uh, it's literally about going out there and cleaning up a mess. And the mess comes from condensation. Condensation is a byproduct of refrigeration. Refrigeration is all the time. Air conditioning is most of the time. Heating is some of the time. So that gives you an idea of how my business runs. And from March to October, we're as busy as we want to be. From October to March, we're looking for things to do, or some guys are. I'm a former plumber, journeyman plumber. I was brought into the business by a very good man named Bill Mann. Bill Mann owned 20 homes. Bill Mann employed his sons to, to do repair work. And when they got to having children and soccer games and football games, guess what? The sons didn't want to do it no more. So Mr. Bill called me, said, Marcus, need you to get under this house, go find that leak and fix it. I don't know what I'm doing. He said, just get under there and I'll tell you what to do. Right? That's what a journeyman plumber is all about. You learn on the job how to fix things. But you also learn how to build drains properly and how to fix leaks properly and things like that. So fast forward 2005, I was with my new wife. She's an LSU person. Get up for the time. They're, 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 they're fabulous. And they had a fabulous alumnus group here back 
you know, probably 15 years ago when we had Nick Saban as the coach, we were winning every game we could get our hands on. So about 100 people, they were asking me, where did you go to school? Remember, as Lynn said, I was in a family business. Back in 1979, if you was willing to go to work, guess what? You had a job, right? Never went to school at a higher level. It, so when, when, when me and Denise were at these LSU functions, they asked me where I went to school. I had to say, nowhere. You know, <laughs> it bothered me. So I told my friend Davey Mann, who brought me into the, the real estate business with his dad and all the houses, I said, Dave, this is bothering me. What, what can I do? He said, man, Marcus, he said, you're so good at plumbing. Why don't you go to refrigeration school? You can go to school at night. You know, you, you can still work during the day and go to school at night. So that's what I did. I went to school for two years and learned about refrigeration. And refrigeration is a fascinating thing. It's all about physics. It's all about changing states of something that's liquid to vapor. Liquid to vapor. We never want solid in our business. Okay. <laughs> unless, unless, it's, unless, it, unless it's at the supermarket, then I do want to see solid surfaces. But never in a home, never in an air conditioned situation. So, there's four things that I built my business model on is design and construction, permitted construction. So, we're out doing airflow in, in new homes duct work and solid equipment. <coughs> I also wanted to do proper diagnosis of problems. The worst thing that I get would be a call back. That's when I go make a service call, leave, they call again. Hey, it's not fixed. We try to eliminate that. And I also am big into pre uh, preventative maintenance. I've got a little brochure that I can can have shared with you today because there's five things that go on during refrigeration. I'm going to start with refrigeration because refrigeration is what it's all about. Air conditioning is just a minor part of refrigeration. But I'm not trying to teach you about how refrigeration works. I just want to share with you what can be done to eliminate problems <coughs> that happen during refrigeration. And I'm going to start with Condensation. Condensation is a, by part, uh, a byproduct of refrigeration. So here's what's actually happening. With refrigeration, there's, there's two, two states that it operates in. It's in a liquid state and it's in a vapor state. When it's in a, when it's in a vapor state, it generally is, is at a very lower temperature, let's say like about 40 degrees. And I don't know if you've ever noticed with your air conditioning system, there's one line that gets this wrapping, a black wrapping that goes on it. And that's called the vapor line. And we try to keep the condensation from dripping in the insulation in the attics because we run the copper lines all through uh, uninsulated areas. And that can be a problem if the insulation is gone. We see critters that chew it off. So we go in and make repairs. We see insulation, uh, we see lines that are just not insulated at all. So that's one factor, but another factor is when the air conditioned system operates, it goes upstairs to the coil or downstairs to the coil, wherever the air conditioned coil, wherever the furnace, wherever the electric furnace is, and there's a device right there that causes it to lose pressure. When it loses pressure, refrigeration like uh, Freon, for example, gets very cold. If, if it's able to come outside, which we don't want it outside of the copper, we're talking about negative 20, negative 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. Guys can get frostbite from having Freon hit their hands, so we, we wear gloves. So, everybody says, well, why don't the system just freeze up immediately? It's all due to airflow. Airflow is the main ingredient of air conditioning. That's why it's the first letter in the situation, air. Everything needs air. The outdoor unit needs air to come through it. The air conditioned system needs the fan motor to push air through the air conditioning coil. And the engineers figured out a long time ago how many rows of coil space we need to keep the air conditioned system from freezing up. And that will happen as long as the proper airflow is right. Where that benefits you as a customer and, and, and me as a business person looking for a customer is that I became an expert 
at sizing duct work. It's all about, I can go into a new structure and I can tell you how much duct work you need to make this space cool properly or heat properly. And it all has to do with the fact that there's a certain size of pipe carries a certain amount of air and there's a certain length of feet that we have to reduce it down to keep the velocity. So I like to build what I call these air conditioned race car systems. It gets into the room quick, it comes back out of the room quick, gets back to the equipment, and it makes the system more efficient. Now, with the water, the water's a big problem. We've got to get rid of water. These are drain pipes. You see these also close to a furnace. This is what we call a trap, and a trap keeps the odors that are in the sewer system from coming into the airstream. But the traps can also cause a problem. What I like to promote during preventative maintenance is I go in, and the first place I want to go is upstairs, where the filters are and where the drain is. I'm carrying either a hand snake or I'm carrying a rotor snake and I'm going through these traps to break up the dirt, the particulate that gets in here. How does it get in here? The fan motor's always blowing air through the coils. The coils will get dirty over a period of time. As they go off into the drain pan, they come down into here and you can collect so much that this will naturally just back up into the system, into the pans, and hopefully not into the house, but we see it so much. In July, I had more calls for water into structures than any month I could ever remember. And July was hot, but it wasn't blazing hot, but it was very wet. We had one of the wettest Julys that I can ever remember. And that causes the dew points to go up. That causes the amount of water to increase trying to get through small pipes like this. Now, in 2016, I was able to, through the help of a friend, kind of incorporate my business and become a licensed general contractor in the state of Tennessee. There's rules that we have to follow. One is, we don't use more than three feet of this from the piece of equipment before we go to something this size. And you'll see many, on many calls I go to, in older homes, I'll see 20, 30 feet of this trying to drain air conditioning systems. That's not good enough. We can actually go out there and rebuild their drain system and make it work more properly. This is the standard code now for a drain system that I have to put in that has a perm in. This is called a deep seal trap. We do wrap it in, with insulation in the attics to protect it during the winter months. But here's what the idea is, basically. And I've got this on kind of backwards here. I'll need to change this up around. So the water comes from the equipment and then will go out at a lower level. You know, water's all about gravity. It's only gonna flow downhill. So it comes into here, it's, it fills up to this level, and then we have a piece just like this going out to the main sewer system. And this is called a deep seal trap, and this is what you want. Now, as far as where the equipment sets, Equipment sets in a pan. This is a water heater pan, so but we have equipment pans. And this is one of the best devices you can put on your system right here. This is a float switch. So for example, this is all pans have a drain line, but they don't always, always drain. I've ran into several situations where homes have settled and the drain pipes are running uphill. So when the person has a problem, the pan will fill up, it won't drain out and it'll overflow into the house. This is the way to stop it, right here. This particular device right here will raise up with the flow of water, and this is wired into the air conditioning system. So I stop the outdoor unit from producing Freon, and it stops the flow. The way that you'll know about it is, the room will start getting hot. You say, well, my air conditioning system, it ain't cooling right right now. So you go outside and look, the outdoor unit ain't running. I get to the service call, and the first thing I do is I look for a tag that's provided in this bag right here. I generally will stick this on the air conditioned oil or the furnace. Before you do anything, check for continuity of this switch. And usually I'll get up there and I'll find 
water in the pan. So we have to address where is it stopped up downstream. And the plumber inside of me knows what to do, where to go look. And it's kind of being real strategic in where I want to cut something open. I had a call back in July where the equipment is set in two forms. It's either laid out because the roof line is too short, left to right, or it stood up. And the, the, the equipment that stood up always drains better. It's the equipment that's laid out in length because those lines are so long and the pitch is so level, they have lots of problems. What I like to do in situations like that is this is called a condensate pump. We actually will put the water right into the pump and this piece right here on the end has a piece of plastic tubing for about a foot connected to a copper line and I can pump it over to a vent stack going through the roof or a, a sewer stack and it gets rid of the water. I love them. They're foolproof because it's got these two wires right here to get wired into the system. So if this thing ever fails, it stops the system. Very important to have protection in the air conditioned business because the water calls are just, you know, the worst thing in the world for me. It's, it makes me feel like I didn't build the system right or I should have told the customer, let me come in and change this, and that's what I'm doing nowadays. Is if I see a poor drain system, I'm telling the customer, we need to do that. It's kind of like in the insurance business. If a customer notices that there's a tree that's diseased, they need to be telling whoever owns that tree, hey, that tree's bad, cut it down. Get it serviced, whatever, because it will cause a big problem sooner than later. We also have devices like this that I can put on the outdoor air condition system. Mm -hmm. This is when the Freon is leaking out of the system. It'll stop the system from freezing up because when a system freezes up, the indoor section coil will be a sheet of ice. You, you won't notice any air in the room because there's no airflow. It can't get through the ice. Guess what happens? Every time that coil thaws out, it's going downhill. It's going to come through the furnace. It's going to come through the equipment. And, and nine times out of 10, it don't all go into the pan. There's too much of it, and it goes everywhere. So you're going to need Service Master at some point. And just to let you know, just this past Saturday, Go ahead, tell them my story. Joe called me to come just do preventative maintenance at her house. I come to the house, the first place I always want to go is wherever the furnace, wherever the filters are. I walk upstairs and I have one of those OMG moments. OMG, the pan was full of water. I'm like, Joe, did you know that this pan was full of water? So anyway, I got busy, and what we do is we strategically cut them and catch the water, and then we get the, I've got uh, pressurized uh, uh, vessels that I use with, with gauges, and I'm I able to blow the, a lot of the clogs out, because they're, generally it's just dirt and stuff and, and scum from mildew that collects in traps. So you can blow that right out. But another factor too is, and they use this in our industry, it's, it's approved by code to do it like this. This is a rubber boot where we take a smaller piece of pipe to go into a bigger piece of pipe. But what I noticed with Joe's system the other day was that this 20-year-old, 15-year-old piece of rubber was starting to tear. It, it, that happens. Just it's, it's just by nature. Everything has a life force, okay? It don't matter what it is. It can be a solid piece of matter. Everything deteriorates over a period of time. The heat and the cold causes this to happen. And I had a call this summer where this was cracked. The drains, it was, it was just a comedy of errors. The drain stopped up. The water started coming through this. And a lot of times these are in areas that are not over pants. So the water came in the house, was coming through the ceiling. It was just another disaster call. I don't want to build my business on calls like that. What I want to do is build my business on selling float switches, 
coil, this is for the air conditioned coil, it goes right on there. If the water level raises up too much, it stops it. So that's one feature of my business. Another feature of my business that I'm moving in a direction is we're talking about uh, a more positive factor of the business is we sell UV lighting and UV lighting kills moles, bacteria, funguses oh, that are in the air stream. Excuse me. Oh, it goes in the air. Yes, yes. It goes on the equipment. It goes above the equipment. And as the air is coming, collecting in the hood, and, and before it gets into the pipes, it's neutralizing any type of that by UV lighting. And what UV lighting does is it kills bacteria. Joe has one of these on her system, and she's told me several well, things. Well, that, can I just add yes. something? I had, a, I had a mold inspector guy come out, Brandon Thompson, and I said, hey, can you just do a test on my house, you know, and I just want to see, you know, what my air quality is like. So he came out, did a test, and he said, the air quality in your house is excellent. He said, it's very rare that we ever see air quality this good in the house, and especially this time of year. And what it was, it, we believe it was that UV light that, that Mark put in my system, so it really works. Thank you, Joe. Right. So, there's yes. no allergy? I'm sorry. Absolutely. Just a comment I had a customer that was, a landlord that was concerned that a tenant said that the air quality caused his son to get as money, he wasn't going to get a, uh, a scholarship, an athletic scholarship. And they put something like this in, and St. Jude uses something like this, which I think is just the best testimonial that you can get. Do those, is it a, a light bulb that wears up? Yes, it is. Every 12 months, we replace the bulb. Um, it costs about $109 to have the bulb replaced. How much is the unit? The unit uh, is sold and installed. This particular one is sold and installed for $3.95. It gets its own power source, so it's independent of the furnace, so it stays active all the time. Yes? Mark, we, we had, it, and I believe either you or Dwayne did the work, and we put some lights on the bottom of one of our heating units, I'll say, up there for this, and I didn't understand it, but we have lights on there. Is that the same thing? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Is, is Generally, this, this particular one will go up in what we call the supplier screen. Okay. This is a device here that's brand new to the market. It's promoted by a company in Georgia, and it's what's called plasma technology. Plasma technology is something that the hospitals are into. For, for germicidal, it can, it can kill E. coli. It can con control all the, the substances that the average filter cannot catch. And the average UV light will not I neutralize all that. are having a lot of health issues. Right, absolutely. This one here would be for a chronic individual right yeah. here. This gets installed in the equipment in the return portion of the airstream. So in other words, right after the filter, this gets mounted inside the equipment. Generally, I mount this right wherever the blower wheel is, moving the air. And it comes in between these two, these tips get have to be cleaned bi-yearly, so I do a, a bi-yearly maintenance, so I go in there and clean the tips off so they stay active, but it directs these bacteria, moles, and funguses right to this area, and it's almost like a bug zapper. It just saps the air, and, and you can test the air afterwards. I've had several people that have installed these in the home. They're not cheap, but they've got a lifetime warranty, so um, it's, it's really a great investment. So what is, <coughs> what is not cheap? What is the this, this, this here. This is a 24 volt model, <coughs> so I'm running it off this transformer where I can plug this in and this powers it and this particular unit is sold and installed for 700 bucks. That's not too bad. So how, not for someone that's paying true. monthly for medicines that well, they can't, true, and true, they chronically true, can't true, get well. True. You can probably get rid of the medicine if they install that. Right. <laughs> it, it, it will definitely, so how many square footage does that do? Excuse me? How much square footage does that do? This generally will do up to a five ton house, so about 2,500 square feet okay. per, per level is what they were meant. Right. So last but not least, we're moving into a communication field. 
So the, the standard digital thermostat I sell, this may be good for the older people. I know the, they used, they probably still like the ones that yeah. they move up and down. We okay? have that one that I this is, this is, I like this one because it's got big numbers and, and I really like it because the batteries are on the front. How many of you ever seen that people have to pull the, the face off to get to the battery that's in the back? I know Honeywell does that. I don't understand why. I like this one much better. Plus, this one has a five-year warranty from the day it's put in. Uh, uh, digital thermostats will go bad. If you do not change the batteries in a reasonable amount of time, these things will freeze up. Mm -hmm. It will destroy the board inside the that. thermostat. We had a tragedy where we were on vacation, and while it was while we were gone, the battery went dead. Right. And our upstairs bedroom carpeting was hot to walk on. The toilet seat was too hot to sit on. And what um, either you or Dwayne told us was, when that goes bad, it diverts to heat, thinking we don't want frozen water pipes. Right. It was incredibly hot. Right. This one does have a five-year warranty, everything that IAQ makes. Now, in the last five years, we've started graduating to communication thermostats. So we have the desk that's out here, but I will share with the group today is that I've had some issues with Nest. And the number one issue I've had with Nest is it gives the customer an option for fan control. And I don't want to do that. I'm going to tell you why, is that airflow needs to be all the time if, if an air conditioner is running. I don't want a customer to have the ability to turn the fan motor off and the outdoor unit still running, because that's going to cause an immediate freeze up. And I had a gentleman in Bartlett that had one of these, and I had to educate him about that fan selection, that he had to set it for auto every time that the air conditioner was on because his outdoor unit started hollering every time the fan cut off in the furnace and the outdoor unit was running what was happening was the freon one vaporizing and the outdoor unit's compressor was getting shot with liquid freon and that can damage them really quick so what the, what i would like to share with today is that i've got brochures for anyone that wants one the echo b is the newest and the latest that's been created and it's been done with Alexa technology. So literally you can walk up to this one and tell it what you want and it will reset itself. And it also has the ability, this was the first version, the Echo B3, and now the Echo B5 has got these sensors that can be put in different rooms so you can have monitoring stations to control this. But this was the first version of it, and they can be installed at a reasonable price. This will boot up to your phone, and it will also uh, work in conjunction with wherever you are in the world. You just literally set it, and it will control the temperatures. These are great opportunities with Christmas coming for you to buy one, give it to a family, a friend member, and I'll set a time to go install this and educate them on how to use it. That's pretty much all I've got today. As you can see, I'm kind of an out-of-the-box type of HVAC guy. I try to help people eliminate having problems because it's not a service call I want. I'm looking to build my install business. I'm looking to build my residential and commercial business. My goal is to have a service tech, an install crew, and an appliance repairman in my network and I'm working towards that right now. Anybody have any questions Mark, I'll be more than happy I, to answer. I just want to say he is a, not just an HVAC guy, he is an HVAC strategist. He can go in and find things that could go wrong like my house. I just went had him do a maintenance call and he came and said, Joe you got a problem and the problem is the insulation in your attic has gotten over in the pan and has gotten down in this pipe and in order to fix it, instead of just trying to blow it out, he cut the whole pipe out, he said, because this stuff is like, insulation's like toilet paper. Once it gets in that pipe, it's impossible to get out. Forget it when it gets down to the 90 degree turn. So you're a strategist, not just somebody who wants to go out and get a paycheck to, pick, to maintenance something. You know what I got? When I first got in the business, I didn't realize it. It's a reactive type of business. It's really, 
HVAC guys are harping on negativity. They're always going out and fixing something that's broke, and I'm trying to look past that. That's right. Everything don't have to be broke. <coughs> I can make things where they won't break as fast, but I'm really trying to educate the consumer on there's opportunities of clearing the air, having air quality products, and having technology products also. And that's where I want my business to go, is providing that benefit to customers, along with what I call um, proper diagnosis. Seeing something, fixing it right, not getting the call back. Thank you very much. Mark, I was going to tell you, talk a little bit about, uh, I know those service calls, and, and this is a pretty good example. We had a, a lady here that was having nothing but notice a high utility bill, or the bill goes up. And when you pulled the uh, filters out, there's no way any of that air could get through there. And talk about your service call, what you do, the call. Oh, my, pre my, my preventative maintenance, yeah, yeah, my right. preventative maintenance yeah. call, I like to do twice a year, spring and, spring and fall. The fall call is not as detailed because furnaces just don't tend to break. There's not as many situations going on with heat as there is with air. But with air, there's always five factors that take an air conditioner down. So the first place I want to go is where the equipment is, the furnace, the air handler, the coil. And I like to snake the drains. I like to go check the filters. I ride filters around on my truck. I also, after that, I also check the electrical components, making sure things are, are no loose wires are going on. Because air conditioners is one of the number one cons consumption factors of an appliance that you've got in your house. Your big bill in the summertime is mainly from the air conditioner. And there's a reason for that, because they're all running at about 13 to 15 amps with the new equipment. That's the 14 sear and greater. If you own air conditioning equipment that's 13 years or more, you could be pulling like 20 amps to 30 amps of power as it's running. It's amazing the difference. What, what's the cost for maintenance? Is it based upon the number of air and AC units you have? Yes, yes, it is. I generally charge with my new. I built my business charging a hundred twenty-nine dollar yearly maintenance. And what I do is I go out and do the spring call, and then I come back in the fall. They pay one time a year, and I give them even a random plumbing call. So they can see what I'm like plumbing wise, and it's just for a minor repair. So I, I may go in and put a fill valve in a toilet. You're only going to be paying for the part, but you get an opportunity in a 365 day period that you don't need to call anybody else but us for heat, air, and plumbing repair. Yeah. On a personal note, I know you've got us scheduled for for that number wise. I'll tell you what, folks, if you don't think it makes a difference with those filters, we uh, we had a gentleman that uh, called us and he was having problems and all of a sudden changed his filter and was amazed how much his air conditioner bill went down. That's why like getting that and getting service service calls, he said he called me back and said he didn't have to turn in the claim after all, but he got his. So the bigger you go, the better off you are. One inch filters are okay. One inch fiberglass filters, you're just wasting a dollar, honestly. You need to go to a plated filter uh, for people without pets. Uh, 90 days, people with pets, 60 days on the pleated filters. The four inch filters are good for six months. And I would also tell you an opportunity that I offer is there is a company called Healthy Filter and we build a sponge and charcoal base filter in a frame that's particularly yours for your equipment. And that's the best way to go. They catch everything in the airflow. Thank you very much. Well, Joe, you have a question? Do you, if you were to buy one, would you buy the Nest or the Echo? Oh, I go with the Echo now. I, I, I don't reckon the Nest was what the big thing five years ago. Okay. And yeah. the Echo now, and, and this the Echo V3, a five model that has Alexa technology, is, yeah. is what generally the millennials and the techie type people are going to want in their home. And what does that cost? This particular unit installed is. $459 installed. 
and last year to older Echo, how much does that cost? Uh, the older Echo is, is a, uh, cheaper. It's like three fifty nine. It don't have the Alexa technology, but it does have the smart technology. And that's just a uh, that gets me in the service call to educate the customer on how it operates. And we still sell the best. It's, just, it's the same price installed three fifty nine. So from a technician's point of view, that goes better. Uh, that's has been known. I could sit in your street. I could take over your computer. I could take over everything. Not even on being a property. But the Echo is uh, 10 times harder. The yes. NASA could take less than two minutes for a beginner hacker to do it. Echo, you have to be a high end good hacker. Black hacker. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon put some good money into their security system. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. That's what well, I like to hear. Can I ask one more yes. What do you recommend if, if, if you notice that your, your AC is not cooling? What's the best thing you can do immediately to avoid damage? Got an answer for you. It's called fan on, system off, yeah. give me a phone call. If it potentially is, is starting to freeze up, mm -hmm. then, for example, you don't want it to continue to freeze. Don't let the outdoor unit continue to try to pump. Mm -hmm. And if it's out of Freon, you don't want your outdoor system running, period. So that's the best situation right there, is that if it is slightly uh, froze up, because I get to feel a lot of calls in the summertime, you can't feel any air coming through the vent. I can hear the furnace running. I know the, the coil is just a solid sheet of ice. I have to go up there and do what I call a controlled thaw and try to catch water, because it, it literally will go everywhere. You know that. You've been to those calls. That's one of those questions. I knew the answer to the question, but that's something that I think most people don't know to do. Don't right. know that they don't know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought this was a wonderful one. Everybody pretty much learned a lot. I tell you what, he's a, you know, a couple of times I've been right on March just a little bit. We we use them, of course, but there are systems there in our, some of our rental properties here in which he was able to grab another used uh, part of an air conditioner and put it in right away, and that really made a big difference. He actually borrowed one from his unit. Of course, I don't think he was staying at the one he was renting. And uh, he put it into ours. We thought, man, what great service work. Well, 